pests are so small that they evade notice in the landscape until they've caused a significant problem. A good example of that is the spider mite. These arthropods are less than a millimeter and very difficult to see with the naked eye. We don't tend to notice them until our plants are showing signs of stress or they're at such high populations that their webbing is developed in the plant. Now fortunately we can use some indicators in the landscape to cue us into when it's time to start looking for the spider mites. The use of plant indicators is called phenology. It's a very useful tool for IPM. It's regularly used on farms, but we can also apply it to our ornamental and vegetable crops. Now spider mites um, frequently infect junipers and roses. They also use a number of trees as hosts, walnuts and elms, as well as a number of other ornamental pests. But these are two that we tend to have uh, significant problems on. And spider mites thrive in hot, dry weather. Now, when it's time to start looking, the weather's warming up, we can use a few cues in the landscape to tell us when to start monitoring. And these include the blooming of the smooth hydrangea, hydrangea arborescens, and also the Adam's needle or yucca filamentosa. So when we see those blooming, it tells us, let's get outside and start scouting for the mites. Now, the best way to do this is to get a sheet of blank white paper, and you wanna hold that below the foliage of the plant and just shake the foliage um, so that if there's any mites on there, they'll, they'll get shaken onto the paper. You'll also see some other dust and such fall out on the paper. Now, right now, we don't have any spider mites, uh, fortunately, but if we did, some of those dust particles would start to move around on the paper, and that's our mites. So when we see the spider mites, we'll consider uh, it's time to do something to control those. Um, it's best to use a very selective um, uh, pesticide and one that has a low impact on natural enemies such as a horticultural oil or soap. Um, but we can also do other things to just discourage spider mite activity and the best way is to encourage the natural enemies and predators of spider mites and we can do that by keeping the foliage uh, clean of dust. dust impacts their behavior. So in the summer when the plants get dusty, just hose them off. Another thing we could do is limit the use of insecticides uh, on, on these plants and also nearby make sure we plant plenty of flowering resources, uh, nectar resources. Natural enemies feed on nectar and planting uh, an abundance of flowers that bloom at different times during the year near our susceptible plants will draw those natural enemies into that area. Of course, the last thing we could do, as with any plant, is maintain the plant health to reduce its susceptibility. And with spider mites, we want to pay attention to keeping our plants well irrigated. Phenology is also very useful in managing bagworms. Um, now, this moth pest is certainly much easier to see in the landscape than the spider mites, but phenology is useful here because timing of pest control measures are very critical. We need to target chemical pesticides, whether they're organic or inorganic, at the very young larval stages. And so knowing when those larvae are active, we can use uh, plant phenology to manage the timing of our applications. Um, again, we can use the blooming cycle of the smooth hydrangea, hydrangea arborescens. When we see that plant blooming, it's time to use our chemical control, such as a BT. Now, of course, removing these bags by hand is another effective management strategy, particularly for small, easily accessible plants. Phenology is a great tool that any gardener can use in the landscape as part of an IPM program. As you monitor pests in your landscape, pay attention to what plants are blooming when those pests are present. Take good notes and you can use these next year in managing the worst pests in your garden.